This infographic shows women's heights in a few countries. Something clearly went wrong here, though. It's the same thing that Florence Nightingale knew how to do right in her famous rose chart almost 200 years ago. Translating data values into visual properties is the key to visualization, but it has some interesting pitfalls that aren't always obvious. Let's take a look. To understand how data mapping works, a bar chart is a good starting point because the bars just grow linearly with the value being shown. So if we have twice the value, we end up with twice the height, three times the value meaning three times the height and so on. We can read this very easily and with pretty good precision. With the height of the bars, the area of the bar also grows linearly, so we don't tend to think about bar charts that way. What happens in the case of a square is different though. If we scale the size of the square, we end up turning twice the value into four times the area, three times the value into nine times the area, and so on. By scaling both sides at once, we're increasing the area by the square of the value. If you remember the formula for the area of the square, you know that it's literally the square of the length of the sides. This wouldn't matter if you were to read these as purely height or purely width, like in a bar chart, but we don't tend to do that. So this quadratic growth of the area exaggerates the difference in the values. What we need to do instead is scale the sides by the square root of the value. That way the squaring that happens to the area cancels out the square root and we end up with the area growing linearly with the value. Now you might think that this is a bit academic because who uses rectangles to show values? Well, tree maps do. The rectangles in a tree map need to be scaled by the area rather than the sides so that we read them correctly. And this also applies to other objects that are read as area, like circles on a map, for example. This exaggeration of values also happens in a slightly more surprising place, and that is the kinds of fancy bar charts you sometimes see in infographics, which use shapes or even images to show values. If you draw a bar chart that consists of triangles, for example, you can do that in two different ways. You can treat it like a normal bar chart and only change the height. That makes the triangles appear skinnier as they get taller though. Or you might decide to scale the triangle in both dimensions, which looks better, but now has four times the area for twice the value, nine times the area for three times the value, and so on. You can certainly try to read this as a pure bar chart, but it makes the visual impression of the differences much larger than it really is. Changing only the height might work for triangles, but you won't do that when you use images. Scaling an image in just one direction would look stretched and weird you'll naturally scale it in two, which makes its area grow quadratically. The infographic from the beginning of this video gets two things wrong. It shows women's average height by country and it's supposed to be read like a bar chart. But the icons are scaled in both directions. Also, the designer of this chart cropped the vertical axis. The combination of these two decisions makes for a chart that dramatically and hilariously exaggerates the differences. This, by the way, is the reason Otto Neurath developed the isotype technique. He used this example of marriage rates to argue that scaling images like this was a bad idea. Instead, if you still want images, you should repeat them. That's the idea behind isotype. You get linear increase and you still get the images. Plus you can count the images and multiply them by whatever the multiplier is for each icon so that you get a fairly precise total number. A chart where it's a little bit less obvious that this is an issue is the Nightingale Rose chart. In my recent video about Florence Nightingale, I mentioned that she had scaled the wedges by area, and she clearly did that on purpose. The reason this is worth mentioning is that she did that in the 1850s, before we really knew much about visual perception and how we read charts. Why is this important in this case, though? Let's look at a pie chart first. The pie chart is constructed by mapping values to angles, but it expresses the values in several ways at once. You might read it as the angle, or you might read it as the arc on the outside of the wedge, or you might read it as the area. All three grow linearly with the value, and we don't actually know how we read it. Though I've done some research on this with my former student, Drew Scow, and we showed that it's pretty clearly not angle, and instead has to be either arc or area. Since all three of these visual cues, angle, area, and arc length, change the same way with the value, this isn't a huge practical problem at least until you start changing the radius of individual pi segments. In Nightingale's rose chart, the angles of all the wedges are the same and the values are shown by their areas. And like before with the squares, there are two ways of doing this. You can scale the radius of each wedge directly, which will give you a quadratic change. Now, if this doesn't seem obvious to you immediately, you're not alone, 
I've actually had discussions about this with visualization folks that were skeptical about this too. But remember the area formula for the circle, and you'll see how the radius is squared, just like in the square. A wedge takes out a constant slice of that, so it doesn't change the way the area grows with the radius. So as before, the way to do this correctly is by using the square root of the value, so you get a linear increase in area. Scaling directly by the radius shows much more dramatic differences, but it's also a misrepresentation of the data, because we don't read these charts like we would a polar bar chart. Mapping data values to visual properties might seem straightforward, but there are some pitfalls. Scaling a two-dimensional object along more than one side exaggerates the value we're seeing because the area grows with the square of the value. This is more obvious in some cases than in others, so it's important to be aware of this and to pay attention to what is being scaled and how. I have links to materials referenced throughout this video in the description below if you want to learn more. Thanks for watching and take care. Thank you.